So hello everyone, my name is Kamila Nazirhanova and today I will present our work on information dispersal with probable retrievability for rollups. This is a joint work with Joachim Noy and David Che, and this work was presented at Advances in Financial Technologies last year. So let's get started. So first let me state what is the problem that we are trying to solve here. And uh, this is a data availability problem that many of you may heard about. And uh, it arises in different blockchain scenarios, but here let me focus on this very simple example just to give you some intuition about the, what the problem is uh, about. So here we have a blockchain. Blocks are getting proposed. They're all valid, so they're accepted. Our blockchain keeps growing. And here this blue rectangular is a block header. And then imagine the following situation. A header uh, is broadcasted to the network, but the corresponding block body is not available. So what should we do? Well, we have a few options here. Uh, first, let's just wait for the block body to appear. But uh, this is clearly um, an issue because this block body may never appear and we will just lose liveness. Um, another option is let's just accept this header because it looks valid. Why not? And we can continue um, building off of this header. And we'll, we'll have a new block here. But then this situation can happen is that this block body is now available and it contains some invalid transaction. And so basically now uh, it deconfirms this block and the block after it, and this leads to a loss of safety. Another option is um, not to uh, do anything with this header, just abandon it and not accept it. And um, this, is, uh, this would work for the full nodes, but unfortunately, uh, the problem will still hold for the light clients because they only operate on headers. And so this is a data availability problem. Um, of course, it's more nuanced than that. But as I said earlier, it uh, arises in many different scenarios. And um, as you saw here, light clients have this problem. Also, this problem uh, uh, arises in rollups with off-chain storage and sharding and many, many other um, cases. But here in this talk, I will focus on rollups with off-chain storage. But before I do that, I want to stress out that the solution that I am going to show you today uh, is applicable actually more widely when it comes to horizontal scaling of blockchains. And it can also be used to scale the base layer, uh, the underlying consensus layer. But for now, let's focus on rollups. So first, let me remind you how rollups work. And specifically, I will talk about Validium rollups. So these are rollups that use validity proofs and off-chain uh, storage. So here we have users. They send their transactions to the rollup operator. The rollup operator executes these transactions off-chain and computes a new state and also produces a validity proof that ensures that the state was computed correctly and uh, uh, sends the data uh, because it needs to be stored somewhere off-chain to the data availability committee. Um, they do some local checks and they send back acknowledgement saying that the data is stored and it is available later on at request. And these two proofs, the availability and the validity proof, uh, they go to the main chain where they can be um, checked by the on-chain contract, by the roll-up on-chain contract. So the question is, how do we construct this data availability committee? Uh, because currently what is used is the entire data is just replicated among the storage nodes, among this data availability committee members. And by replicated, I mean that every node stores the entire copy of the data, which is uh, clearly not efficient and uh, not scalable, which also leads to uh, centralization. So from now on, I will focus on uh, trying to answer this question, how do we design an efficient data availability committee? So first candidate is a verifiable information dispersal. So in the verifiable information dispersal, we have a following setup. We have M nodes. We have a client that has some data B and it wants to store this data among this uh, set of nodes. And we have a client, could be a different client that wants to retrieve this data. And when it retrieves the data, it will reconstruct some block B prime, some data B prime. And uh, some of the nodes up to T could be malicious. And the client, 
that disperses the data could also be malicious. So VAD is a primitive that consists of these two functionalities, disperse and retrieve, and also has four properties. So first is a termination property saying that, um, uh, let me do that saying that if this client here is honest then and it invokes the disperse then all nodes here uh all honest nodes here will also complete the disperse agreement saying that if uh some honest node here completes the disperse then all honest nodes will complete the disperse availability says that after enough nodes here complete the disperse then if this client was honest and then invokes to cheap it will reconstruct some block b prime and correctness saying that again, after enough nodes here complete the disperse, uh, all honest clients will always reconstruct the same B prime. And if this client here was also honest, then this B prime is the same as this B. So now let's uh, examine uh, if these properties are actually good for rollups, if they match our requirements. So, first of all, agreement says that um, all honest nodes will complete disperse. And uh, this is too strong. This leads to very expensive communication, and this is not necessarily what we want for rollups. We just want the data. Like if if some uh, smaller subset of nodes has the data, we're fine with it. Another is availability property says that we reconstruct some block B prime, and this block B prime is uh, the same B only if the client who dispersed it was honest. Um, but this is too weak. We want to always reconstruct this B prime. And uh, why does this make sense in uh, the context of rollups is because the data that we are dispersing among the data availability committee is basically the state. And the commitment to the state uh, goes on the main chain. So when I recover the data, I want to recover something uh, that is actually the state, such that if I commit to this data, I will actually receive the same commitment that is available on the main chain. And so uh, I want to have a proof of retrievability. And also what I want, I want this proof be verifiable by a third party, because as I mentioned earlier, this, is go, this goes on the main chain. So to address um, these issues, we present the semi-asynchronous verifiable information dispersal with probable retrievability, which consists of five functionalities. First is a commit. It takes as input the block of data B and outputs a commitment. Disperse uh, takes as input block of data B and outputs a certificate of retrievability. Verify functionality allows us to check if this is a correct certificate of retrievability given the commitment. Retrieve is uh, given the certificate of retrievability and the commitment, we will output a block B. And a setup functionality that outputs uh, some set of global public parameters and some local secret parameters for every storage node. So what are the properties that uh, such primitive uh, has? We have three properties. And uh, the first is commitment binding, saying that if um, we want our commit functionality to be a deterministic binding commitment, saying that for two uh, different inputs, we can compute the same output. Correctness says that if an honest client invokes this first, then it eventually outputs a certificate of retrievability that is correct. And this is basically, you can think about this as a liveness property. And availability property, saying that if we have a correct certificate of retrievability, then if we retrieve a data, for this certificate of retrievability and for this commitment, and we commit to this data, it will be the same commitment. So this is exactly what we wanted for rollups. And this is, you can think about this as a safety uh, property. So these are the definitions, but uh, how do we actually construct such a scheme? So uh, we can do that, but for that we need uh, a few ingredients. So the first is a deterministic linear vector commitment. Uh, for example, the case DG commitments. Um, all we need is we need them to be binding, we need them to be deterministic, and we need to, them to be linearly homomorphic, saying that if we commit to a linear combination we will, uh, of, the, uh, of vectors, it will be a linear combination of the commitments. And I will explain later why this uh, is important for us. Also, so we need some standard crypto primitives such as uh, secure a signature scheme and the collision resistant hash function. And also we will use linear erasure codes. So now let me walk you through our construction. So here we first represent our block B 
as a matrix U. And what we do next is we commit to every column of our matrix using this um, vector commitment. So basically, this first H1, this is a commitment. Uh, it corresponds to this uh, first column of this uh, matrix U. Next, we encode our matrix row-wise. So what we do is we treat every row of this matrix as an information vector. We use our linear code and we output a code uh, word. And so basically our coded matrix here is uh, constructed such as every row here is a code word. And then uh, we take a column of this coded matrix, we take all the commitments and we send it to our storage node J. So what the storage node J does is um, it checks this. It encodes this vector commitments and checks if it is equal to the commitment of this uh, chunk that it received. And um, this should hold because of this linear homomorphic property that I showed earlier. So basically, if we rewrite this in uh, for our variables, uh, this should hold because our encoding is just a linear operation. So this C, how we obtained, is just our matrix multiplied with the generator matrix. So if we rewrite this linear homomorphic property for our generator matrix and for our original data, this should hold too. And um, it checks this, and this check was first uh, introduced in this paper. Um, and uh, if it doesn't hold, uh, the node will abort. But if it holds, it will compute the commitment as a hash of all these vector commitments, and it will store the vector commitments, and it will store the coded chunk. And it will send back a confirmation receipt, which is basically a, a signed message that says something like, oh, I acknowledge, like, C acknowledged. And uh, the client collects a quorum of such signatures and outputs a certificate of retrievability. So this is basically the dispersed step. This is our commit. So basically this is the hash of our vector commitments. Verify just uh, checks if we have a quorum of signatures and retrieve uh, client basically asks every storage node for the data that it has. That is basically H1 to HK and the C. Uh, it does this check to ensure that the data is correct. And once it uh, has enough data, it can just decode it using um, our um, decoder to for our linear regio code. So how does our scheme stand in comparison with other uh, VIDs? Oh, sorry. So security theorem uh, for our scheme is as follows, is our construction realizes semi AVID PR with resilience up to T, where T can be chosen arbitrarily and can be chosen up to one half. If our vector commitment is uh, binding and our hash function is collision resistant, if and if our signatures are existential and portable. So the first two give us commitment binding and the second and third give us availability. And now actually let's compare our scheme to other schemes. Uh, so first of all, repetition scheme. As I mentioned earlier, this is a scheme where every storage node just uh, stores the entire copy of the data. And uh, surprisingly, the resilience is only one half if we want to ensure achievability. So this resilience uh, bound comes uh, from the fact that we want to ensure correctness and availability property at the same time. Uh, AVA, original AVAD scheme and uh, some improvements over the original scheme um, have resilience up to one third, while uh, scalable data availability oracles and our work, uh, we can have a higher resilience bound. AVADM is the best scheme in terms of communication and storage complexity. And our scheme is comparable. It has actually a better communication complexity, although a little bit um, worse uh, storage complexity, but uh, we ensure retrievability. AVIDFP ensures retrievability, but it has a worse communication storage complexity, so it's not feasible for our scenario. And uh, again, uh, the um, or availability oracles and our work uh, both of this works, as you can see, we introduced some trade-off between the resilience bound and the communication complexity. Although this uh, availability oracles, they do not ensure retrievability. We also have some experiments um, 
And here, as you can see, I have three plots for different uh, data availability committee sizes. And here I plot uh, commit and then code step. And these are the steps that are being called most of the times because they are used in the disperse step. And this is the step, uh, this is the functionality that the rollup operator calls uh, all the time. And as you can see, this is practical. And also note that all these operations are embarrassingly parallel. Um, yeah, and for more details, please check out our paper. Uh, there are more experiments, and there are also some uh, other sections that I didn't cover today, such as privacy and data availability assembly. Thank you.